rolling, rolling, rolling. Wind, wind, wind. The wind, I hear it calling my name louder than a thunderclap. Clouds line the sky, paving the way as if a road map. Air surrounding my ride as if to provide another set of wheels. Floating. Carrying me up down, around, through the hills, it took me a while to get to this place of serenity, say patience is a virtue, but it's not virtue, it's peace, I am at peace, at peace, the wind has my back, I am at peace, at peace rolling with the clouds, nothing but space, space that cannot separate me from my ride, rolling, 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 rolling with the clouds, I hear the wind calling my name louder than thunderclaps, Clouds line the sky, paving the way, as if a road map, rolling, rolling, rolling. This is uh, my man, Selly Sale, <laughs> Marcel filming out in Georgia, and I've uh, been looking forward to doing this interview for quite some time. How you doing, big bro? Man, I ain't making no noise. I'm blessed. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, keep inspiring me, brother. I really appreciate what you're doing, especially... Um, being that we con connected by way of Facebook, I would like for you to tell everybody about who you are and what you got going on and the importance of the program that you have out there in Georgia. Okay, um, basically, everything um, hold on one second, let me try to get, let me try to get a little bit of clarity. Basically, everybody knows me. I'm big fan of all the uh, creator and whatever you want to get me on that. I started back, I was only about, probably about six years ago now. And it has definitely grown into something that is amazing. Um, one of the biggest things for us has been can you hear me still? Am I there? Yep. Okay. One of the biggest things for us, man, is we started Fast Talking Only because uh, we, I moved to Atlanta, you know, I got into the bike that I wasn't in. I wasn't into bike. I actually couldn't stand bike before I moved to Atlanta. We were in the low-riding cars and, you know, trucks and stuff like that. 
um, on the West Coast. That's where I'm from, originally from Compton, California. Okay. And when I moved to Atlanta, I moved to Atlanta, just um, actually chasing a job. I had a hell of a job out here that I got a job offer. Came out, got to love the job, kind of fell in love with Atlanta, fell in love with the laid back part of it, because Atlanta is laid back coming from where I come from. You know, so I went from carry, having to carry guns every day to carrying no guns and being able to breathe, basically, coming from Compton. So, uh, anyway, just fell in love with Atlanta, ended up staying here, and um, the Atlanta was real big on the bike set. They weren't even doing low riding, they weren't low riding, doing cars or none of that. And I had mine here, and, and couldn't, you know, I am asked, hey man, where everybody ain't got at? At the time, it was Old National at a place called the, uh, um, the Frozen Palace. Uh, long story short, I took my car up there, and they really disrespected me on my car game. And I had one of the cleanest cars around, period. And But because it was all motorcycles, they didn't care nothing about cars. Right. They didn't care less about a car. It was all about bikes and, you know, and, and at that time, it wasn't really Harleys. It was mostly all sports bikes. So, you know, I, I said, well, let me see what's going on. Got out the car parked in the dirt, in the mud, basically in the back, in the field. And I walked up to the establishment, and I just saw a bunch of grown men with leather onesies on. Everybody was walking around with leather onesies. That's what I call them, the leather onesies. Okay. Uh, uh, the little riding suits. <laughs> but uh, it was just a different vibe, man. It was different. It was cool. Um, end up finding out that some of my brothers from California that came in, which was a rare breed. Um, ended up hanging out with them. Um, at one of their functions, met my wife. And she is the one that got me to ride motorcycles and got me into the whole entire motorcycle scene. Uh, because I was following them around while she was riding. And, you know, I was actually the tote boy. I was told all this stuff. And we're going to put the tents, the seat, and bail, all the stuff in your car. And we're going to ride a motorcycle. You just be there. We'll get there. So if I need something. Oh, that's how they were treating me. It was real, they was, back then, they was kind of a little bit disrespectful back then to your boy, man. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... It was all in for him, and I, you know, it was what it was. Anyway, end up taking a chance on the motorcycles, and and uh, never looked back, man. Uh, it's just been, it's been my love ever since. Ever since I got on, and you know, and uh, and got out there. Um, and other than that, man, FHO is a movement. Everybody want to want to want to relate it to racing. That was the catalyst of it, and I used the racing to bring everybody together. But FHO is, it's just so much more than that. But it's just been fun. It's been real fun. Yeah, I see you've been really grinding, man. I mean, you 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 just as passionate about what you're doing like I am. And uh, I watch yeah. the videos as many as I can. Actually, I'm going to tell you a secret. I've been downloading the videos so because I really don't watch a lot okay. of TV. So what I'll do is I'll download the videos, and then I'll put them in my computer, and I just make a file of all the vids, man. I got you. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I use yeah, those for fine. references, and I think that that's, you know, that's real important, especially if people want to get their game up on um, just anything yeah. that's going on as far as education and stuff is concerned. And, um, you know, people, until I've seen people like yourself and a couple other guys who have Harleys and they race them, a lot of people don't know that them Harleys can really get up. So... I'm watching, well, like... especially now, man. Especially now. They done, they done put so much money into them now. I mean, you got... When we first started the race, it up, I mean, I got it from the West Coast. I didn't invent the racing part of it. I got it from the West Coast. That's what we did on the West Coast. That's what, you know, that's what they did. We, on a Sunday or so, any day of the week, you can get it. And it was it was fun. It was all in fun. Uh, you know, for bragging rights and riding, you know, just for really in fun. So when I moved to Atlanta... And the fun, I mean, the, the motorcycle said it just got, it got normal. It just got, you know, it got plain. So I started the races, and um, it just took off from there, man. And then it became a every Sunday thing, and then I named it Sunday Fun Day. Um, I came on with the FHO uh, moniker probably about three months after the first race. And um, that's what it was. That's what it was. It took off from there. But when we first started racing, the biggest motor back then was probably a 117. When we first started, like the first one or two years, was a 117. That was the big one. You you put up and had a 117, you was like, you know, Hercules. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Now, now they're at 163 with nitrous and turbo on them. Right. 
Oh, Harley. Yes. <laughs> oh, Harley. <laughs> so, you know, you got, you got my man Gaddafi. You know, he's running in a quarter mile on a full dresser on Harley Davidson. He's running a quarter mile, low eights, high seven. And that's another thing. These are full dressers, man, that they are bringing yeah. out Bags. and looking yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Now I ain't. A, I I don't have a Harley. I got Jap bikes, but you know I customize mine, and I still have my first and second bike. And um, you know I've even turned my bikes into baggers just as experiments, and they came out pretty good. Not, that's how I learned how to uh, you know do a lot of designs and stuff like that. But as a person who has a Harley and seeing the the biker um, culture in Georgia grow the way that it has. What are some of the things that um, you like and uh, I'm going to have to put this out there, dislike about the bike set? I'm speaking as far as the South is concerned. For me, what, what I like about what I like about it the most is is the potential for what it can be. Okay. That's what I like about it the most, the potential for what it can be. I mean, Georgia, the bike set, period, um, it has so much potential, man. We we have actually the capability, man, of getting back to being our own community again. Because everything you need, and I, and I constantly preach this on my show and just in life in general, everything you need is in the bike set. If you need a plumber, if you need a doctor, if you need a lawyer, if you need a dentist, if you need a home builder, all of them are right there in the bike set with you. They're right there. They're, they're made in another club, you know, with another vest on, but he's still right there in the community. Um, and one of the things, man, that I constantly preach and, and, and try to get the people to understand is that they have taken our private community and made it a public community, and that's what has deadened, and what, what I ain't going to say deadened, but that, that's what has put the soul of this motorcycle community away from us. They, they sucked the soul out of us when it became public. Okay. Um, and one of my goals is, is uh, one, of, one of the things I want to do is, is try to bring that back.
Godfather of motorcycle builders, an African American as well as the American motorcycle world. He was the first to create one of the most iconic motorcycles known as the Captain America and the Billy Bike. The two choppers known in the movie Easy Riders in 1969 starring Peter Fonda also starring Dennis Hopper and Jack Nicholson. Hardy and Vaz remained largely unknown and uncredited for 25 years as they were not accepted as being equal due to their color as African Americans were not welcomed into the mainstream white motorcycle world in the USA at the time. Known locally as Benny and the King of Bikes, Ben Hardy Motorcycle Services was located at 1168 Florence in Los Angeles. He is a mentor to many of the local motorcyclists in South Central in Los Angeles. The Captain American bike was made from a 20-year-old heavily customized Harley Davidson panhead and is considered one of the most iconic motorcycles ever built. One which captured the zeitgeist of a generation and became the anti-established American symbol. Working with another black motorcycle builder, coordinator Cliff Voss, Hardy built two Billy bikes and three Captain America bikes. 
one of which was destroyed in the making of the movie Easy Riders, and the rest, unfortunately, were stolen. Ben has influenced many biker builders, known as well as unknown. Along with the well-known bike builders, Jesse James of West Coast Choppers, well known for his Diablo bike and many custom build creations, as well as being on several TV shows such as Motorcycle Mania and Monster Garage, and the legendary Sugar Bear, who was one of his students, famous for his front-end springs, and for his shop, Sugar Bear Choppers, in California. On behalf of We Ride Barker for Life, the series we are grateful to have known and learned of this legend and share this history to you. Let us know what you think about this episode. If you want to learn more about Ben Hardy, as well as Chris Boz, and the famous two bikes they made famous across the world, check out Wikipedia or any information on YouTube. Let us know what you think about this educational portion of the legends of the biker industry. On behalf of We Ride Biker for Life, Ra'el, we thank you.